rolling, not a stop. Watch, don't never stop. Just the flow that got the block hot, got super hot. Hey, give me my respect. Alrighty, welcome back. This is episode three of K's Hot Seat. Today we have Isaac with me. What's we got on? we got classic teams going on right now. So we got the 13, 14 Pacers versus the 11, 12 New York Knicks. I am the Knicks. He's obviously the Pacers. Pacers. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and get this started. All right. So for today's first topic, we are going to discuss Wesley Matthews entering the Pacers team. So, Isaac, what's your opinion? What do you think he's going to bring to that environment for the Pacers? Well, I mean, honestly, you got to look at kind of where it all all started. Um, I mean, you can start from the very beginning with Oladipo uh, and his horrible injury. That just – you look at that and you look at what he means to the team and what he's uh, brought to the team since he was there from the very beginning, and it's just uh, – it, there's no question that that was a big loss. Yeah, for so, sure. I mean, they really had to find something. Um, was this, like, the answer I think everybody was looking for? I don't know. But um, he was definitely better than, uh, you know, just kind of seeing how the rest of the season would go, I would think. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think Wesley Matthews, he definitely brings, you know, obviously he can somewhat be a starting caliber shooting guard, but yeah. what he mostly brings that I think the Pacers really brought him in for is his defense. His yeah. defense is really good. Um, he can hit those three-pointers that are wide open for the most part. He's just like an average player who can get the job done. Yeah. And uh, he's 31 years old. Ultimately, to me, I feel like, He's just a place keeper until Victor Oladipo gets back. Yeah. So um, I think it's a good pickup for the Pacers. It's a smart pickup. Yeah. For sure. I actually had a chance to watch him play. So I was at the game on Wednesday when they played against the Bucks, the last game before the All Star break. And you could tell a difference. I mean, he's definitely he covers the floor really well, which is something that um, you know you don't see in a lot of players that just come in from with a brand new team. And he is, he he brought some spark. Now, he wasn't hitting shots. So, I, I mean, they did bring him in to, you know, take some good shots. And he wasn't hitting as much as maybe they uh, wanted him to the other night, um, especially they needed him to. Um, but he uh, he plays some good basketball. He really does. And he plays really well with that, I think, with that offensive scheme. For sure, for sure. I mean, the, the whole offensive scheme around the Pacers is team built, um, not individual, yeah. you know basically hitting your shots, passing the ball, getting those assists, you know, playing a real team-oriented type of game plan. And ultimately, you know, they didn't want to bring in a, another player that, you know, likes to play iso ball. Yeah. And I don't think that's a, what Wesley Matthews is at all. So um, I definitely think I, I graded a good pickup for the Pacers. Oh, come on, Carmella. Yeah. There were some other people that were in the mix. I actually even heard, which I thought was kind of strange, but – like a Derrick Rose uh, for a pickup. Yeah. Um, but he wasn't doing so well with the Timberwolves. I didn't really see him, th that play happening. But I think this is a much, I mean, as strange as it sounds, I think this is a much better pickup for the Pacers because of that reason that Derrick Rose, it, he's great, definitely great, but would he have been as much of a team player as, you know, exactly. Heck Matthews been? Um, he, he's used to kind of running things on his own. Um, and I'm not sure that that would have happened with the, yeah. the Pacers. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Derrick Rose, uh, Derrick Rose obviously is a elite player when he's playing to you know his full potential. But ultimately, if he came to over to the Pacers, it would be a nice tempo change. It would pick us up a little bit in that aspect. But sell some more tickets. Yeah, it would definitely sell some more <laughs> tickets. <laughs> but ultimately, long run, like it would turn into ISO ball. And I mean, that may, that might be good for the first couple games. You know, you have Derrick Rose going one-on-one against some of these elite, yeah. you know, point guards. But long run, Derrick Rose is, you know, about 29, 30 years old. Yeah. He's not going to be around forever, right. even if he did have an outstanding, uh, you know, a couple seasons or a couple years if we had him for that long. Yeah. But I mean, ultimately, when that runs out, when he can no longer play the ISO ball, the Pacers had completely gotten away from their original game plan, and they yeah. would have to rebuild it once again. Yeah. I feel like right now is a really good. Uh, it was a good time after Paul George left, and they brought in Oladipo that yeah. they really started making it. Hey, this is about the entire team. 
you know, whenever Paul George was there, they played a lot of iso ball with mm. Paul George. I mean, he still – they ran good plays, you know. They still try to implement the full team. But when it came down to it and it came down to those final two minutes in the game, it really turned into Paul George has the ball, get out the way. Yep. Yeah. And so if you brought in a player like Derrick Rose, ultimately that's what it would probably turn into again. It would turn into Derrick Rose has the ball, get out the way. Right. You know, bringing in Wesley Matthews, he's not an ISO player at all. So that still leaves the floor open for these plays that they actually yeah. get to run, which in a play, in a play setting, you know, you can have anyone taking that final shot. You can have anyone is capable of scoring in those final two minutes where it's most important. Yeah. Um, but if you bring in Derrick Rose, you bring in a player like that, and the other team knows that that's your go-to guy in these final two minutes, it's a lot easier to game plan against. Right. This is kind of why the uh, the Warriors have such success whenever it comes down the line in the stretch of games because they have so many weapons that they yeah. use. I mean, they have they like go any direction. Exactly. They yeah. have Durant. Of course, Durant likes to play ISO ball, but that's not always what they do. You right. know, they can run picks off the ball to get you know Steph Curry open to get Clay Thompson open. Yeah. Um, that's a good team-oriented, you know, type of setting that they have over there in Golden State. So yeah. that's I feel like that's kind of what the Pacers are trying to go after. Yeah. The question is though, I think from this is what everybody's asking is, is this enough to keep them in the hunt to at least get playoff ball and keep them in the third fourth position um and i mean personally i don't i don't see them ever win sitting win the conference but i don't think they would have won the conference had they had all the depot anyway yeah. I mean, you've got the bucks you've got the raptors you've got the yeah. 76ers it's just not we don't have quite enough and i'm not sure we needed to honestly get to that point because we could still make a pretty good run in the playoffs so i don't know what do you think about i mean do you think that's enough to keep them Keep them in the hunt. I, I, in my opinion, I think it just really comes down to the coaching for one. Nate McMillan yeah. keeping his eye, his guys' his eyes on the prize. Yeah. And he's I, done a good job with that so far. I mean, especially last year and, and now this year with losing their best, uh, their starting player. Yeah, for sure. But I mean, to me, it just comes down to the Pacer players ultimately just taking that step from being okay, I'm a good player, I'm yeah. capable of making the playoffs, into we're an elite team that's capable of beating these yeah. uh, players like such that are on the Bucks and that right. are on the 76ers, you know, all these all-stars. Yeah. And I think it's more of just a confidence thing because the, the talent's there. I mean, yeah. you have Sabonis, he's a great player. Yeah. You have Bogdanovich, elite shooter. You have Miles Turner, who he's, he's a pretty good player. He's young, he's still developing, but still he's good nonetheless right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have Tyreek Hill, which brings some experience to this young core. Like, they have all the keys that are there to yeah. be a great team. It's just more of a confidence thing. You know, are they able to get into that mindset that, yes, we are very capable of beating this Bucks, beating this 76ers yeah. team, and we will do it. Yeah. Like I mentioned, I went to the game on Wednesday. My... There still feels like there's just something missing. I don't I don't know quite what it is, but um, when you're playing Giannis and watching him just kind of manhandling our guys, I mean, obviously he's an elite player. He's phenomenal down below. He's a phenomenal shooter. I mean, he can do just about anything. He had a triple-double on us. There wasn't a lot that we were doing to really kind of slow him down. And I, I don't right now I just don't know if we have the core player that can do that. And the other issue was, and this is where Matthews doesn't come into the play, and that is, um, you don't have that uh, that uh, the clutch shooter mm -hmm. that Oladipo was. So when it was going down to the end of the game, we were up by 10, we started to lose some momentum. We didn't really have anybody that came in and just kind of stepped up and said, "Hey, I'm going to take, you know, start kind of running things, going to take things over," and it showed, and that's why we ended up losing the game. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um... Let's kind of switch topics a little bit. You mentioned Giannis and his triple-double. Let's talk about another triple-double king. That's that of Russell Westbrook. Yeah. Now, Russell Westbrook has been killing it in the league. So far in his career, he's now third all-time in triple-doubles. He's only behind Oscar Robertson. He's behind Magic Johnson. But honestly, can you put Russell Westbrook in the category of being like third greatest all time? You know what I mean? Like in comparison with like a Michael Jordan, like obviously his statistics are really good. He's getting triple doubles at this, you know, crazy rate. 
And obviously, like, players like Jordan and Kobe, they didn't do that. But it's also obvious that he's not on the same level of them. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that Russell Westbrook isn't mentioned whenever it comes to that top three, top four players ever to play the game when he's getting these many triple doubles? Well, I mean, I'd say it's unfortunate for him because really it all goes back to the championships. And I don't know if that's a fair way to assess it. I mean, you could every single sport's kind of like that. Unfortunate for him. I and mean, he just, he's been there, but uh, they didn't get the win. And right now he's just not in that talks because he, he hasn't won a single championship yet. And you have the Kobe's and LeBron's and the Jordans. And uh, I mean, you've got every, the Spurs, solid teams that have been there and they've, they've made the win. Um, and so I, what you do talk about with him, though, is that he hasn't really lost <laughs> any footing in his, in the conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, he's consistently played well, um, especially even when uh, you know Kevin Durant leaves the scene and he's not there anymore. He knows he's going to have to do more than he was doing before. And even with Paul George in the in the picture now, it's still just a matter of um, him stepping up every time he gets the ball. And I think he's been able to do that, but. I really don't know if he'll ever be um, considered in the top 10, 5, 10, depending on, uh, you know, if he can pull a championship out, then maybe that'll change. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, you ultimately got to ask yourself, well, if he's doing this great on this team, he's getting all these triple doubles, he's pulling the weight of the team, why is it that he can't make it that extra leap to get to the playoffs? And I feel like that factor of why he can't uh, get to the championship, I mean, yeah. win a championship. Right. I think that is what is separating him from Michael Jordan, yeah. separating him from LeBron, separating him from Kobe, because he can't will his team to help him get to that championship spot. Right. And um, when it comes down to it, ultimately that's probably a, a mental characteristic because he's carrying that load yeah. to a degree. But, like, with Michael Jordan, um, as you kind of mentioned earlier, he, he – really got everyone on the team involved yeah you know he really made sure everyone was at the same level of playing field that he is and he made sure that whenever it came to that playoff everyone took it serious i feel like with westbrook it's more of a individual mentality of well i'm gonna pull my weight whether you guys do or not you know i'm gonna make sure i do what i have to do Now, clearly, he's still involving the team. If he's getting triple doubles, I mean, he's got assists and he's getting involved. But, yeah, I feel the same way. He's just – he's very much reliant on his own abilities and not necessarily always including everybody else that's on his team. And uh, that's not going to get you championships. And I I think we know that um, even no matter how good you are. Okay, okay. Well, final thought on the whole Westbrook thing. If Westbrook did have the opportunity to switch – with Michael Jordan and go to like the 96 Bulls, do you think he would have as much success with the 96 Bulls as Jordan did? Well, uh, he I don't see Westbrook having the same uh, mentality that Jordan has in order to go out and, and win. He, no, he's clearly going to have some, I would say a few better players on his team, so he would probably still maybe uh, make a run in the playoffs, but as far as winning championships like Jordan did, I, I just don't see it. I don't see it happening. Yeah, very interesting. I mean, my opinion on the matter is kind of the same. I feel like uh, Jordan had that it mentality when it came down to the final three seconds, final five seconds of the game. Like, I'm going to get this rock. I'm going to score the ball. And uh, ultimately, I feel like Westbrook, he does have that killer mentality. But when it comes down to it, he'll miss more shots than Jordan. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, so now we're at halftime. Whenever we get to halftime – I have three questions for you, okay? The first question is, what is your starting five all time? All time? All time. That's a good question. I mean, obviously, there's been lots of uh, solid players out there. So, um, I mean, I'll just start point guard. I don't know if anybody else would choose this. I mean, he would be in the conversation, but I'm a big Isaiah Thomas fan. Um, wow. Okay. Is, oh, wait, Isaiah Thomas, Detroit Pistons. Oh, uh, Pistons. Oh, yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, not uh, not the short dude. <laughs> but uh, he's just – you kind of like when you watch him, and I had had the opportunity of being able to watch him and play, is he – you can kind of connect it to like somebody in hockey who just always knows where everybody is. And he's the guy that just knows where everybody is, and he knows how to make that pass and make that play. Um, he never honestly had to be a, an incredible scorer. He just knew how to take care of the ball. 
And that's huge, huge out there. Um, shooting guard, I mean, you can't argue it. Uh, Jordan's and the just all time favorite, but also he's just knew how to dominate. Um, and he, I would give him the ball at the last second every single game, every time. That's just there's no question about it. Um, center Shaq it would be my choice. Yeah, I've just never seen a center dominate like he did. Um, Barkley has to be a, in question. Um, he's just Charles Barkley kind of the same way. And another interesting part, because we were talking about Westbrook, never had a championship, um, but he definitely was uh, somebody that would be worth, um, I mean, being in, in that conversation. Um, what am I missing? Small forward? Small forward, yep. So I would probably... I wrote him down here. Let me bring this back up. Oh, well, no question about it. I don't even know why I ever even forgot about him. He's an old Indiana man, Indiana State. I think small forward, you got to go Larry Bird. Larry Bird. I mean, it, one of the most incredible shots I've ever seen. And as nice as he looks, he was a – I mean, he knew how to get, get down and play dirty in the game. And uh, So he was just a phenomenal basketball player and um, did a lot for the game too. All right. Well, that's your starting five. My second question is, who do you think is going to win the championship this year? To be completely honest with you, I don't really know. I mean, I think this is one of the years where it's most up in the air than it ever has been. Yeah. Um, uh, everybody used to always talk about the Warriors and say, well, they're the number one favorites. I'm not sure they are this year. I think they've definitely shown that they can be, be beat, and they've had some chemistry problems for – well, past several uh, month or two, um, had some issues. I think Durant's causing some problems out there, to be completely honest. And um, so I would love to see the East make a run because it seems like they haven't had a, a solid team there for a while with the Cavs and uh, all that LeBron's done. But the Bucks, I don't know. I mean, you, you could have them in the conversation, but you're still probably going to see the Warriors there. I just don't – I'm not – I'm less confident this year than I ever have been that they're actually going to get the win. All right, but if you had to pick that one team, is it the Warriors? I'm going to say they're probably going to win it, but probably they're going to go to six or seven games in every single uh, every single round uh, in order gotcha. to get there. Gotcha. All right, then my final question of the three questions for halftime that I have for you <laughs> is if you could pick one NBA player to fight, who would it be? <laughs> <laughs> to fight? <laughs> Um, I'm going to pick Isaiah Thomas again, but no, 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 wait, no, no, wait. Let me go back. Let me go back. The short Isaiah Thomas. Yeah, the short one. That's going to be the short one. Either him or Muggsy Bogues because we would line up pretty well. <laughs> Bogues is a... I don't know, man. I, I feel yeah. like they could throw some hands. Uh, probably, <laughs> but at least I've got the height thing on them. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, cool. Well, the next segment that we're going to get into, supposedly starting the, se the second half, <laughs> is going to be... Anthony Davis. So Anthony Davis in their game against OKC, he gets kind of hurt on his shoulder, and he just leaves the that. game and leaves the entire stadium mid-game. Now, what does? How does this make you feel as you know, not only a fan of the sport, you know, of basketball, not just the NBA, but of basketball. Someone just barely getting hurt and leaving the entire stadium, leaving his team out on the court. How does that make you feel in that aspect? Not only that, but also as like a general manager or a coach, you know, someone who has invested into this player. Obviously, you want to trade, and that's apparent. Yeah. But still, he's on contract. He's still on the team right yeah. now. How does that make you feel? What are your opinions on that? It's very clear that he does not want to play for the Pelicans anymore. He's made that very clear. He wants to go somewhere else. But my opinion, and this is kind of – you talk about the class of a player. That is a very unclassy move. I mean, when you look at um, – when you are a part of a team, you're a part of a team until you're not a part of that team anymore. And I right. think that's the mentality that all these players need to have. And until things have changed in his uh, his direction, like whether he's playing for a new team the next next year or not, he needs to show that he's a part of that team. And I, I just don't think you handle that uh, that way. I've never heard of that happening before, um, a player just leaving – uh, the entire stadium before the game's even over. Um, usually, you know, they do the, uh, they'll get hurt, and you'll see them on the sideline cheering on their team for the rest of the game. Right. Uh, even when it is pretty serious. So I was pretty disappointed to hear about that. And I mean, he hasn't been the classiest player through this whole process anyway, mm -hmm. so maybe I'm not too surprised by it. But um, 
the fact that he would go to that depth. I mean, I, as a GM or as a coach and as an owner, I would be very, uh, very frustrated with that response. And I mean, we can talk about this after your you give your thoughts on it. But how do you even respond to that? What do you even do um, to set the the tone that that can't that's not tolerated? Yeah, for sure. I mean. I feel like as a, a, a general manager or a coach or whoever it is that drafted this player, you know, obviously when you get a player in the initial beginning, you're thinking long term. You're thinking yeah. this, someone's going to help the team. And if it comes down to a result as this, you know, him wanting a trade, him making it very clear that he does not want to be a part of the team, and then even to the extent of him walking out mid-game, you know, whether he be injured or not, um, I feel like that's just a blow, like straight to your, you know, re- not only your recruiting, but like your pride. If you invest in something and you, you know, put everything you have into this player, you give yeah. this player, you know, surrounding pieces, you try your hardest for him to have a successful career and bring championships to your franchise. And he kind of treats you in this manner. That's just like a, a slap in the face to management. And uh, as far as like, the atmosphere of the locker room right now and like making it clear that that's not tolerated like there's nothing much you can do in that sense i mean they fired the gm uh after the whole thing happened i don't know if that was uh in relation to what happened with anthony davis or not i know the pelicans upper management was very you know po'd about him leaving mid-game yeah i mean it's just it puts the management of the pelicans in a, a really rough spot because, I mean, ultimately, this is a player that you you do need. Yeah. You need this player for this year if you want to make any type of run in the playoffs or anything like that, run to the playoffs. So, I mean, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know how you would handle it uh, as management. I mean, personally, I agree with you. He has handled it very uh, un- immaturely, very selfishly, um, kind of like how Paul George yeah. left the Pacers. Like. I feel like you announcing that you don't want to be with a team, it's 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 not something you should go about publicly. Right. That's something that you should voice your opinion about with the coach. You should voice yeah. your opinion about with a um you know GM, upper management, whatever that case may be. Yeah. Um, kind of piggybacking piggybacking off of this uh, Anthony Davis thing. Obviously, it's apparent that he might go to Los Angeles. There's another player in Los Angeles, LeBron James. Now, LeBron James. The chemistry on that team is off. But yeah. I got to bring up the point of if you're a superstar in the NBA, is it really the best move for you to go play with LeBron? Because obviously LeBron is the best player. And ultimately what they're thinking is, okay, well, we're going to get championships. But you have to also realize, and this is I feel like is what Kyrie Irving kind of realized, that's why he left LeBron, is that you are no longer – the player on that team yeah. you are now a role player to lebron james you are now the player that helps lebron james get his ring and ultimately i feel like that takes away from your legacy yeah i mean it kind of like reminds me of like a scotty pippen whenever jordan left now obviously that's different scotty pippen wasn't as talented as like an anthony davis would be right. going to lebron james yeah but i mean ultimately we remember scotty pippen's career that he was with michael jordan yeah. him and michael jordan got all of those rings i feel like if anthony davis goes to los angeles with lebron james that's kind of going to put his legacy down in the dirt that's going to say that he's no longer the guy he's the supporting character of the guy what are your opinions on it do you think like going to lebron james is always is the best move for some of these stars I think it's a interesting play. Well, let me say it. Start there. No, to talk briefly about the chemistry of the Lakers, the fact that LeBron was out for 17 games because of his injury, puts a huge dagger in what they were trying to build and what they were trying to put together. So that could be a piece of that in general. But to look at the the star the stars that have walked through uh, the Lakers, they usually always had somebody else around them. And right now, it doesn't look like LeBron really has that. So it makes sense that they're clearly going after somebody who has some some depth and has some experience because they have a lot of young players right now. And they can't rely on them to in order to get them possibly to the next level. Um, it's just going to take some time. And LeBron's not a patient person. We've seen that. 
He's had coaches fired. He's had players yeah. traded. I mean, I he's mean, that's just LeBron's team. He's just not a patient guy in order to watch, um, you know, to see what's going to happen. So it makes sense that they're going after somebody. Now, as a player, I don't know if I – how would you not want to play with the, the best player that's in the game right now? you got to ask yourself that question. So, you know, if I had the opportunity and I was a player and I could play with uh, Michael Jordan, I, I would have done it, even though that I would have known that I was a role player. Would I do the same with LeBron? He's a different player. Um, you know that everything pretty much runs through him on the offensive side. But what I think it comes down to is the position of that, of that specific player. And in an Anthony Davis situation, he's running the role as a center, and I think that it could play well. I really do. Um, I'm not sure I want to see it necessarily, but I would say that um, if you're a, another shooting guard, if you're another point guard, if you're a small forward, then I don't, I don't know if I would be interested in that because then everything is running through his position. Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. And I then, mean, I feel like that, that kind of raises the point, though. You said that, like, why wouldn't you want to play with the best player? I feel like that's kind of a mentality that they've adopted nowadays because yeah. back in the day, you would never if, – if someone right. even remotely created a lie that said Patrick Ewing wanted to go play with Michael Jordan, yeah. that would be just – yeah. It would be awful. It would, yeah. Everyone would be, you know, lighting fires in the street. Yeah. It's like spitting in the face of the team that has uh, the New York Knicks, and you'd be shunned from that society. That exactly. Would, I mean, it wouldn't be supported. But like nowadays, like you can be an enemy of the team, and you just kind of like how this Durant thing went yeah. down with him and uh, Golden State. I yeah. mean, enemy of the team, they beat you in the playoffs. You go join the team next, the next season, right. and like it's a, it's okay, it's accepted. Yeah. That's kind of just the uh, the lifestyle that was adopted yeah. nowadays in yeah. the NBA. It's a different change in mentality, that's for sure. I mean, I don't know, I don't remember which team it was, but when you had the the crowd cheering for Clay Thomas Thompson to come yeah. cheer, come join your team, um, that's just different. Uh, typically, t- players are hated. Um, like, and I I think that's still a little bit there. Like, I don't think anybody would ever want LeBron James to come play for the Indiana Pacers no. because of what he's done to us, and we we hate him. We <laughs> we just hate him as a player. But it definitely is. I think you're right. It's a different mentality than what the way it used to be. Well, we've uh <laughs> we've talked about LeBron James. We've talked about all these uh superstars going towards him. We've talked about the mentality of the NBA. Um, I feel like we've really talked about a lot. Um, ultimately, this is a very close game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. With LeBron James, ooh. That's a nice move. That's a nice move. <laughs> Amari Stoudemire. Him and his goofy glasses. Go ahead and dunk that. That's fine. <laughs> but with LeBron James, as you uh, brought up, you know, him being the guy on that team, I also agree that you being a point guard, shooting guard, small forward, it, it's not worth it going to play for him because he's going to be the person having the ball the majority of the time. I feel like a power forward or a center, it could be beneficial for you to go. But ultimately, like I said, with Anthony Davis, it, it's still like it'll take away from your legacy. Yeah. And the other question, too, is is even that going to be enough for the Lakers to make a good run? It could be. I mean, I don't. I really don't know. I, I know they have some issues in the center level. Um, they haven't really found the missing piece there, I don't think. But is that going to get them to a championship or put them in a run for a championship against the clearly against the Golden State Warriors? I, I don't. I don't think so. I personally don't think so. Um, they're still going to have to add a few more pieces. And Magic Johnson, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to be him at all right now. Oh, um, I no. mean, to play his role and try to figure out how he's going to be able to piece this team together. Because um, uh, the saddest part is, and this is what, uh, unfortunately, a lot of teams do in the NBA now, is they're thinking about next year already mm-hmm. in the sense that this year is pretty much a wash. Um, the the uh, I would say the chances of the Lakers even making it to the playoffs this year um, have gone down drastically. Oh, they're very and, slim, yeah. And the fact that they didn't get anything um, in the tra- before the trade deadline uh, – that it kind just, of solidifies yeah. that they're not going to make it to the playoffs. Yep. And um, they, maybe they'll throw on the towel. I don't know. I hope not. And I hope they try to still make a run just to, because that's what good basketball is supposed to be. But I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned like you would hate to be in the position of Magic Johnson, but think about the position of Luke Walton. Yeah. The coach for that team. I mean, 
he's powerless, really. Yeah. You have Magic Johnson making all the moves for your team. You have LeBron James basically running the plays, running the in-game effects uh, of your game or of your team. Luke Walton is kind of just a figure now. He's yeah. he's not really the great coach that he was with the Lakers originally. Whenever they had initially yeah. drafted Lonzo Ball, yeah. Um, I feel like that's not good yeah. in the sense of uh, how basketball is supposed to be played. Yeah. When, and I feel like that's kind of the the toxic environment that LeBron James brings yeah. with him wherever he goes. He kind of just runs the team. And then uh, management, you know, upper management, GMs, they try to uh, please LeBron James yeah. by, you know, giving him what he wants, what he feels like he needs. Oh, come on. We got a close game, man. 27 seconds, three-point game. Ooh. Ooh, big miss. Oh, don't go out of bounds. Ooh. Unfortunately for uh, Walton, what if things don't change, he may not have a job next year. Yeah. And I'm not sure that's fair to him. Because uh, I feel like he's doing, like you said, I feel like he's doing the best he can. I mean, I don't think he's uh, – but right now he's – there's sometimes I think there's just some players and situations that are uncoachable, and this honestly might be one of them. Yeah, 100%. And how would you feel to be one of the players like um, Lonzo or who were in the mix of the trade who, uh, you know, say, hey, we're willing to give you up in order to go after somebody else, and then no. you're supposed to go out there and try hard on the team. I mean, yeah, that's, for sure. that's I mean, a challenge. I kind of hinted on it in my first episode with Dory and um, LeBron James with this toxic environment that he not only brings with the coaches, but also brings that environment that no one's job is safe yeah. whenever they're in the locker room with him. Yep. I mean, Lonzo Ball was drafted there by Magic Johnson, and Magic Johnson said – He's going to be the franchise player that they're going to build his team around. Right. And then all of a sudden, since LeBron James became a free agent, they made moves after him. He agreed to that four-year deal to go to Los Angeles. That's no longer the case. And now what are they doing? They're considering trading Lonzo away. Right. I mean. That's a big ooh, shot. Big bro. shot. That's yeah, nice. I see that. <laughs> it's all right, though. We're good. Oh, oh, go, go, go. Ah, I tried to pass it. <laughs> Yeah, Sorry. so it'll be interesting just kind of see what happens, but I, I hope uh, he gets to keep his job, and because I feel like he does has a, he's done a good job with the team. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's kind of sad the position that he's been put in with LeBron James coming to his team, and ultimately uh, Walton should ask himself, does he deserve that? I mean, right. like he was a great coach. He brought the Lakers up a lot especially whenever he was uh the assistant coach for the mm -hmm. golden state warriors yeah. like whenever steve kerr sat out he still led the, not granted the warriors had some really good players yeah but he still led them to a great season i mean i feel like lebron james coming there and all of this stuff that's happening in that environment it's going right over his head it's somewhat of a disrespect you know yeah i feel like he should go if i was in luke walton's position he should go to a team that would appreciate him more and uh use his ideas more give me a pick come on here oh come on <laughs> hey man you got more content for overtime <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure we can come up with something boy that's a tough shot yeah yeah let's see paul george hit that nowadays he's gotten a lot better granted his first year with the uh, the Thunder was not uh, not good. Yeah, they had the whole Carmelo Anthony fiasco. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> the the fact of the playoff just collapse was that's some of the worst basketball I've seen them play mm -hmm. basically all year, and I'm not even sure really how it happened. But um, it was he's back into I think a little bit of his prime and how he was he was playing before, and which is nice to see. I, I oh ooh, that could have worked. <laughs> Just, that, just uh, a little tip in is all I needed, man. Just the, <laughs> that kind of works. All right, so now the the ball's in your court. You got point eight seconds. What you gonna do? Uh, nothing. Get yeah. that out of here. Oh, I got. Or you still got? I still two got seconds. the ball. You, you got point happens. two seconds. I'm I not can't get. Yeah, I, mean, I can't even get the ball off in this time. Nah. I mean, hey, went worked. in, went in. Yeah, but, almost, that, that's yeah. a great almost win shot. You know what I mean? So what do we do? We keep, uh, keep the yeah, broadcast going? Yeah, we're going to keep going. Hey, uh, <laughs> here we go. You mentioned uh, Paul George going over there with uh, Carmelo Anthony. Obviously, you have these two facing off. That's pretty cool. I didn't even think about that. Let me ask a question here. Go ahead. What happened to Carmelo? And what's going to happen to him? Is he done? Like, is he done? Is his career finished in, in the NBA? You know, it, it's sad 
to say so, but yes, I honestly think that at this point, after the OKC trade, you know, everyone thought, okay, this is going to be the revive. This is it. This yeah. is it. Like, he's going to come back. Yeah. He has great pieces now. He's going to finally make that run for the ring that he deserves. But, I mean, ultimately, with that first year, it just went down the toilet. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, no one really knows for certain what happened with that season. You know, they had all the key ingredients. You know, they had four players who were undoubtedly great. Yeah. And that involves uh, Russell Westbrook, Paul George, Carmelo, and then Steven Adams, which yep. is overlooked. Yep. But I think what ultimately made the difference is Carmelo Anthony's just mentality of, well, yes, you are all great, but I am greater than you. Yeah. And even though that's not the case, he's an older player now. I mean, don't get me wrong, he's still an elite scorer. Yep. But I think his mentality is what caused the issue. You know, he came to the team, and I remember specifically a press conference that was like, oh, well, would you consider taking minutes off the bench? He said, "Me no. bench, yeah. me yeah. bench player." Couldn't even think about it. Like, that's not a good mentality. The mentality you should have is, "I'm gonna do whatever it takes for this best team to win." Best for the team, yeah. And not what's best for me. I, I I feel like that's partially why they traded him away because of his mentality, because of his "I'm great" type of attitude. And then, um, ultimately, he went over to the Rockets. The Rockets, they, they didn't really use him as much because they had players that are greater than him as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and he's, if you still have that I'm the best on this team mentality, even though you're not the best on the team, that's very toxic yeah. for your, your environment. Yeah. So, I mean, ultimately, I I, I couldn't tell you. Yeah. I, I honestly believe his career is done. It's sad that it's done because he was a great player and he definitely deserved a ring. You know, in his generation, I would say he honestly was probably top five small forwards. Yeah. But... He's just his mentality was what caused him, you know, to not have any type of uh, real success in the NBA. So we don't, I personally don't think we get to see very often uh, a player's careers kind of collapse uh, in front of us. So mm -hmm. typically the pick, like the season will end and then you, they just kind of disappear. Like they they're, they go to a different team, they're traded off, and you just don't hear about them much. All this right. one's it, it's a weird it's just a strange to me just a strange situation of you thought the situations he was in was going to work you really thought that he was going to help the team it was going to be uh, similar to when he used to play for the Knicks I mean as we're watching right now I mean he had great seasons with them and then for whatever reason it just didn't uh, it didn't connect and it's really really weird now to kind of see him to even have the conversation that well, yeah he might be done because uh, he probably had you know five six more seasons left that he could have been an elite player yeah for sure for sure i mean like i said it i feel like the whole you know it, there was a lot of publicity around his you know demise too yeah and i feel like the whole reason behind that is because he like i said he's an elite player when it comes down to it you look at his stats on the page you look at you know him to the books he looks really good. You look yeah. at his performance, it's really good. Him going in with this team, oh, it should be great because he makes these numbers, they make those numbers, you combine them, it's really good. But yeah. the thing that we don't take into consideration is his personality, is his, his attitude, his mentality. And that's ultimately why I believe none of those situations ever panned out for him. Yeah. What, honestly, I could see happening. Oh, that's not a three. But what I could see happening is one more team kind of giving him a shot and uh, somebody who just needs a player that's got some veteranship i don't know it's a word but uh, is a veteran in in the locker room and yeah so i mean i could uh, like a like a i could see him in a mix of like a cleveland cavaliers him moving in kind of just that's that then becomes his team you could kind of play well with them and yeah. and they could i i think they'd be willing to throw some money at him just to see if it would work yeah, yeah. But I feel like that that kind of uh that, that's kind of what happened with Vince Carter, for example. When Vince Carter went to Memphis, he's a, he acted as a veteran type player to help you know these young players develop yeah. and then eventually do have good success. But I think with Carmelo Anthony, that's not going to be possible. Like I said, it comes back to that mentality of him not wanting to be a bench player. Yeah. Even though he's going to be like 36 years old in the future, no way this guy's starting over me. I'm better. I'm elite. Right. You know, I had all the success in my career. Like, why is he starting over me? And that's why I don't think even as a veteran he would be able to help these people because it's still a me versus you mentality. Right. Yeah. 
Well, we'll see what happens. I think, um, like I said, they, there's the potential that a team could try to just see what they'd be willing to give them, give them a little bit uh, to see what would happen. But um, I don't see him being that same player as it used to be. For sure. That was a good game. It really was game. a really good game. It went to overtime. I mean, it was a nice game. It was a nice talk. We talked about a lot of really nice topics in the not only current yeah. NBA, but, you know, <laughs> in the past. Yeah. So, I mean, it's been really nice having you on the show, man. Uh, Appreciate it. It's been nice beating you in overtime. <laughs> <laughs> Typical Pacers collapsing at the end of the game. Yeah, but to the Knicks. Yeah. To the Knicks. Come yeah. on. Well, all right. It's your boy, K. This is K's Hot Seat. Thanks, you guys, for tuning in. Um, this is episode three. Stay tuned. Thursdays at 6 o'clock is when we upload the episodes. Episode four should be coming at you next week. Um, please like, subscribe, share the video. Um, comments for more content whatever you want to see let me know if you have any ideas that you want to express yourself just go ahead and slide it in the comments and again uh thanks for watching rolling not a stop watch don't never stop this the flow that got the block hot